happens. So people will uh, probably, hopefully, maybe coming in. I'll wait a few minutes. So I'll give it uh, two more minutes and then we start. So uh, I would uh, start now. So welcome to this uh, panel called Driving Social Innovation Through Inspiration. Uh, first of all, many thanks to the organization, Horasis, uh, Frank Jurgen to uh, invite us here. Uh, we have a very distinguished panel today um, and we will tackle some uh, hard issues uh, related to um, social innovation. Um, we will discuss Amongst others, we, what drives us really? What is the inspiration for uh, social innovation? Um, then also we will discuss business models around innovation. Is there anything special about it? Are they different from uh, traditional business models? Um, we will talk about education related to uh, social innovation uh, and then a few other topics. Uh, but before we do so, I would like to ask the panel members to um, introduce uh, themselves. And I will follow the screens here. First of all, uh, uh, Natalie Gutals, can you uh, introduce yourself, please? Yes, absolutely. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Natalie Gutals uh, from iDrops, a nonprofit organization in Belgium, Ghent. Uh, what we do, we are a social innovation organization. So that's our focus. That's what we do. We've been existing for 10 years. We're a steady team with 20 people and around 25 freelancers. Uh, we're working around um, healthcare, welfare, uh, around sustainability, ecology, around education and future skills, and also around diversity and inclusion. So what we do is we, um, through design processes, we go for solutions, uh, innovative solutions, where we use technology, where we use all kinds of facets to get to another level, let's say. And what we do, we always start locally to go internationally afterwards and also to influence policymakers. That's who we are and what we do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, next uh, panel member is uh, Jordi. Uh, Jordi, can you please uh, introduce yourself briefly? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, thanks, Yves. Um, well, good afternoon to everybody. It's uh, my pleasure to be part of this uh, excellent panel today and contribute by providing my view. My name is uh, Jordi Raffles. I'm uh, CEO and co-founder of InnoGet. InnoGet is a company uh, based in uh, Barcelona. Uh, basically, we have been providing uh, open innovation services to corporations that are embracing innovation in different fields, also in the social uh, aspect of innovation when it comes to launching and transforming their business into more uh, circular economy and sustainable uh, 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 business. Uh, we do run uh, what we call an open innovation network. Uh, it's a similar thing of a LinkedIn, Facebook or Twitter uh, network for basically 
helping uh, people uh, innovating better by, cooper by cooperating with uh, external stakeholders. So really looking forward to uh, participate, to share my ideas and uh, have an open discussion with all of you. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Uh, next panel member is uh, Aziz. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Abdulaziz al -Bakr. I'm from Saudi Arabia, chairman of uh, BMT, Business Management Technology. Uh, as an entrepreneur myself, I've been, I have the experience of all the struggles that uh, an entrepreneur has in a developing country, uh, in non-developed countries. So, and I worked with, with incubators. I helped a lot of uh, startups. So hopefully I'll, I'll be able to add some uh, highlight on some of the important issues that uh, social entrepreneurship uh, faces. Okay, thank you. And uh, next panel member is uh, Ricarda. Please introduce yourself. Yes, hello everybody. Um, my name is Riccardo, I'm from Italy. I have a past experience as a manager in big companies. And then when I became mother the second time, I experienced how a private life was perceived as a, a sort of a problem for professional life. And I thought it was a paradox. So I started a company that sells to other companies, a digital platform that transforms life events into soft skill trainings. And we do this with a blended uh, method because we could put together digital for the theory and then we have the experiential part of this learning through real life events. And I think this is like, this is the future of learning, I'm pretty sure, uh, because we cannot keep on considering life as a problem. I think that we all agree that this life is the reason why we do what we do. And so I'm very excited. My company is going to be five, in, uh, five years old in 10 days. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, and last but uh, not least, Janet, can you also introduce yourself? Oh, you're on mute still. This is better? Yes, it's good. All right. So uh, thank you so much and, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so my name is Janet Lockstrup and I'm based in, in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, and I come from the corporate world. So my background is that I have been running uh, marketing, communication, branding, but also societal impact and sustainability uh, in, in big companies. And uh, in my latest job, I did that in Danske Bank. And part of that role was actually also to be responsible for our program when it comes to supporting uh, young startups, entrepreneurs, and with a special focus on social startups. So we did different things like uh, accelerator programs, digital platforms, pitch events and so on so um, and that's why I sort of came into uh, to this world um, then um, since then uh, I'm now working more in boards serving different boards and one of the boards that I'm serving in now is the Danish Foundation for Entrepreneurship which has a focus on supporting uh, entrepreneurship uh, by teaching in schools and so on uh, and we can come back to that because that's a really important point in terms of uh, making this happen. Then uh, finally, I would say that I'm also uh, chairing an advisory board for a social startup called Ngubu. Uh, and that startup um, has in its heart, in the heart of its business model, that it wants to support uh, the women in, in Kenya by helping them uh, grow coffee. And we then sell that coffee uh, in the more mature markets. Uh, and by doing so, uh, we help them with um, having a job so they can provide for themselves, but also make the, make sure that kids go to school. Okay, very interesting. So, um, yeah, we have a fantastic panel here. Um, about myself a bit, I'm co-founder and also CEO of a Swiss biotech company called Biolingus. Uh, what we do, we have, let's say, um, we work on biological medicines like insulin, which normally have to be injected. And we can make a small pill which you put under the tongue. That's why the name is Biolingus. Um, and although it's a high tech, uh, it makes, let's say, the, the products uh, lower cost uh, on one hand and it makes them more stable so you don't uh, have to refrigerate them. And as a result of that, we can actually increase affordability, which is an important, let's say, 
uh, imperative of the World Health Organization. Uh, and we give, can give access to people who normally don't have access to this kind of drugs because of the, the cost or because of the, the, the need for refrigeration as well. Uh, so that's what we do. And with this, I would like to uh, kick off the discussion by asking uh, every one of you um, what, what really drives you? Why, why are you in this field of uh, social innovation? And what inspires you to do this? Um, and so I will go a bit reverse, uh, starting with uh, Janet again. If you could uh, talk a bit, what drives you? What inspires you to do? So, so, so first of all, I do believe that that entrepreneurs and and startups they they are the future. They are the ones that uh, are going to create the new business areas, and they are also the ones who are going to come up with with new solutions to some of the big problems that the world. Uh, is facing at the moment. So so I think that that's the key of it, that, that we need those young startups to become successful because it will help us all, actually. And then I think what also inspires me is that that when I worked with those in, in my former role in, in Danske Bank, uh, I was amazed to see uh, the dedication that those people have. I was amazed to see some of the solutions that they are coming up with that that nobody would actually have thought of before yeah. which is everything from of course shoes uh, made out of plastic to food out of insects to helping uh, people with autism may get a job uh, and it just shows me that that if we can help those people become successful we can achieve so much more yeah um yeah very interesting and you raise an interesting point is social innovation something typically for small companies or is it also fitting in a large company we can come back uh, to that later. Um, but maybe first, Ricarda, can you share what inspires you to do social innovation? Yes, uh, easy question. <laughs> okay. So I don't I don't feel like I'm doing social innovation. I am I think I'm doing something needed. And I realized in you know, a quite late age because I started uh, being a social innovator when I turned more than 40, but I realized that nobody else was going to do this for me. <laughs> So I had been waiting for things to happen. And then I realized that actually, if you want things to happen, maybe the best way to do it is do it yourself. And what really uh, what really uh, urges me every day to do what I do is that I know that we are we're not doing the best that we could do. We could do much better than what we're doing now. We have all the tools and energies and resources to live a happy life and to have a, to take care of one another. And we keep on looking for this kind of resources in the wrong places. And more concretely, every day I get a lot of energy from my children and I can bring this energy at work. And I see how this is needed by the world of work. And I can't believe that we are not enlarging the picture enough to let this energy reach the society because we keep on looking at it like if it was in conflict. So I am, I'm inspired by the idea that I can have an impact without being the daughter of anyone or the wife of anyone, just being myself, just because of the things I'm understanding and thinking every day, I can have an impact. And I, and I feel it as a big power and I see it as a huge responsibility. So there's nothing else I would want to do than this. And every day, I'm just, I'm, I'm done, but every day I ask myself, implicitly ask myself, am I doing what I think I can do best? Because sometimes you end up doing things that you don't do very well, but you think you should do them. But then when you really flourish is when you do what you can do well. And so every day I think we, we can ask ourselves, am I still at the place where I think I'm meant to be? And every day the answer I get is yes. And then I can, I can stand. I, I'm a setup so you know how hard it is especially nowadays that I'm a mother and I want to spend time with my kids. But every day I, do, I know I'm doing something that has a meaning and I'm flourishing in it. That's great. Sounds very inspiring. Um, Aziz, you want to uh, give your view on this? What inspires you in uh, social innovation? Well, the way I look at it is uh, when you look at the societies, uh, a lot of the unprivileged uh, people uh, they they depend on uh, donations and charity and that's not the right way some of them they although they are in need but they don't like to take that uh, charity so 
you always have to think about that and how you can create something sustainable. And I think social entrepreneurship, it's not just uh, creating a company that uh, that has a goal of uh, providing good, but it's also the awareness of the importance of ha- uh, to, do, to have an impact on the society. That's the... I think that's the number one goal of uh, doing all of this social impact or um, social entrepreneurship. If you have that awareness with everybody, even in the corporate, that will help the communities. So that awareness is very important, and that's what we try to do when you hire, when you train, when you mentor, when you try to help startups or invest with them or whatever, you have to make sure that that concept is uh, within their mindset before the the goals and strategy. Then they would be able to formulate that in a strategy and a business model to help the community and the society. Okay, very good. Uh, Jordi, can you share what... Uh what inspires you in social innovation or to work in this field? Yes, well, we are not really uh, working in this field directly. Uh, the, uh, our relationship uh, with social innovation, it's a kind of a learning and, and growing process for us. So we founded the company back in 2006, just right after the internet was booming. Uh, and uh, we... Uh, we're aiming at this at that time to help to democratize knowledge uh, transfer and, and and technology sharing. So by using the internet as a way to uh, foster and uh, enhance cooperation uh, between and among different uh, stakeholders that are part of R and D projects, innovation in many different fields. What we've seen over the years is a kind of a transformation. Uh, not only on the mindset of entrepreneurs, on young entrepreneurs, but also on big corporations that are are really the ones that are uh, pushing and uh, the engines for uh, this transformation to happen at the end of the day. So we will come back to this later, how can we make this kind of social innovation sustainable for those big and large corporations. But uh, um, as a a concept itself, social, social innovation, it, it, from my point of view, it's uh, not something that uh, should be uh, an objective or an, an inspiration uh, by itself, but it should be um, um, uh, I would say um, a desire for any any organization to achieve at the end, right? To bring something into the marketplace mm-hmm. that really helps to uh, transform the way we live and the, the way we use resources and the way we feel that uh, uh, achieving happiness uh, uh, is something that we could do uh, more sustainably. Yeah, okay, Thank great. You. And um, now, Natalie, uh, what, what inspires you to do social innovation? What, what inspires me uh, doing social innovation? Um, in a way, it's very easy. It's, um, you know, our, our big dream or my big dream was when starting iDrops was to see people happy, you know, to see smiles on people's faces. And I remember that saying to my first board of directors and they were all looking at me like, what's going on with you? What are you saying now? But I really mean it. You know, and for us and the rest of the crew, it's like that. What we really want to obtain is a balanced and, and healthy society. And that might sound very naive, but sometimes you have to be a little bit naive just to, to follow your goals. And that is a thing that we working on, you know, when we get out of bed. And that's a thing that we take with us when we go to sleep. And that is like the only reason why I'm doing this, because I really believe in people. I really believe that everybody has so much potential inside, but that unfortunately due to circumstances, is it through education of being born in that part of the world or in that neighborhood that you don't have yeah, all the potential being unlocked, let's say, that your potential is unlocked. And that's something that we, our group, is really believing in, that 
there's really a lot of it and everyone and it's just a way to get it out of the people and together we can make those solutions and have an impact on society on policy making on decision makers and so forth so that's my why that's my big belief yeah so when, when we listen to all of you i mean uh, uh, doing social innovation sounds something that really comes from a certain motivation inside but it's also very motivating on itself um, it makes uh, one very excited to do you can help society uh, so that brings us to the next let's say main topic for discussion how do we link let's say doing social innovation with the business yeah is is there a separate business plan for doing innovation if you're an innovative company is it part for for of a of um, let's say normal business plan um, and and for instance if we see uh, large pharmaceutical or large companies, not just pharmaceutical companies. I mean, the social innovation part in, in general is not uh, so explicit or so strong. The same with other large companies. You, so you see it more in smaller companies. Um, so that raises the question on the, on, on the business model itself. I mean, is, do you need a bi different business model for driving social innovation or not? Or are there different business models? I see, I see uh, Natalie... Uh, you, you seem to have a certain view on that. Absolutely, because it has also been one of our struggles, you know, to find like the right way to do it, like financially. So that's why we, after 10 years, what we doing is like a financial mixing. And, and that's what we really believe in, that at one hand, there are subsidies and you need those subsidies to experiment. And with the, exper the things that you experiment, then with those models, we, we sell them in some kind of way. So it's like using those models to go to local authorities and, and to companies. And so everything that we learned here that we can translate there so that you have like a hybrid kind of a system. But next to that, we are even so open for philanthropy. Um, we're even open for you know, crowdfunding, okay, that's just like little, that's good for marketing. But we always try to see what is the best thing possible. And then something else I also wanted to say was what we also now at this very moment are starting to experiment is that, for example, with our refugees or uh, our yeah, other vulnerable groups, what we do is, I told you about the empowerment, about future skill development, about and so on and so on. We have um, those projects and what we do is that we like to create something to sell the products that the people make. So if it's like digital handicrafts or it's handicrafts or whatsoever, that we also get some kind of community around it so that the empowerment is in two ways. At one hand, okay, people do something they're strong about, but at the other hand, it's also financial model so that also money comes back in again. So that I just want to share with you, like one hand okay. find mixing, other hand also how you can work with your target groups and get return of it. Yeah, yeah it, it sounds like more a kind of bottom-up model that uh, that grows then, uh, but maybe therefore I can ask uh, Jeanette to give also your view because you come from the, the corporate world, which typically has more a top-down approach. Uh, so So how can one, let's say, blend the social innovation into a business model of a large company or yeah so 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 what i'd start by saying is that 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 when we in danske bank when we worked with uh especially the, the startups who had uh, a social purpose in the core of their business model i would say that's the most important difference when you compare with a big corporate that these young ones they have a social problem that they want to solve that's the core of the core of what they want to do. But then what they also want to do is actually to become financially sustainable. So, and, and, and that was often the problem we saw when we worked with those because they had the great idea, they had the passion, they had the, 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 the great hearts and, and, and all of that. But what was difficult for them was often to have the, the more classical business toolbox to make it happen. And that's where at least that's what we saw, and, and, and that's where we could help them uh, in terms of giving them access to 
experts and, and mentors and, and more the classical things, because what we could see was if they combined uh, the social purpose with some of the more classical business tools, then uh, they actually became more sustainable as a business. Uh, so I was just, I'll just uh, put that uh, perspective in, in, into it as yeah. well. So it's interesting to see, let's say, the, 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 the small business, let's say, business model and, and social innovation and the large company business. Uh, maybe I want to ask the word also to Ricarda. You had also some comments on, let's say, the business model for social innovation. Yeah, my company works. <laughs> so we are a for-profit company, although we, I think we have a very strong impact. Mm -hmm. impact. And first of all, I think that social in and innovation are two very complex words. Even one of them, like innovation alone, is already like hard. Because if you go for innovation in the market, you're proposing something that nobody ever proposed before. So you have to, mm -hmm. to start your own road. That's already something. Yeah. Then if the innovation also has a social purpose, in a way it's uh, addressing a market that for some reason was not seen as profitable by other companies, by other businesses. So the reason why there is a social need is because the market is failing there. It's not reaching. For some reason, there is no profit. or The, the, the usual uh, road of the market don't see a profit there. Um, what, what I thought when I, when I wanted to start my, my new my company, I come from profit. So I know how to work with profit companies. And I knew I could have done something non-profit to spread the message that becoming a mother was an opportunity for developing skills. But what I saw, and I think this is what innovation is about, I saw a different connection from two, between two problems. Because I had been in companies myself, and I was a manager, and I was seeing how much money they were investing for mm -hmm. me to gain skills. Yeah. So there was a cost here. And then I saw how much it costed to them to lose people, like mothers, mm -hmm. because they became mothers. So there was another cost here. And the new connection, so innovation is about connecting differently things that are already there. The new connection created a, what in marketing terms is called a blue ocean. So there is an opportunity here by connecting two losses and making them become an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And by chance, this innovation, by chance or by purpose, it has a social impact. Yeah. So I think that... Um, uh, yeah, it's so speaking about social innovation is very hard because it's a very complex subject. And whenever you try to translate it into linear points of understanding, you get lost. You could yeah. hear how each one of us is like, yeah, but because it's about framing things, it's about building new streets and so on. But I strongly believe that the market has the best and most effective highways for delivering impact. So we have to find a way to use those highways to, for the impact to reach everybody. Because this is a, every impact we are, you are having is getting very, very urgent. Mm -hmm. And so I think the market, yeah. the sustainability of the market provides what mm -hmm. we need to have the impact. Yeah, I recognize some of the things you say uh, also in our own company where actually our goal was to bring, let's say, innovative uh, pharmaceutical products to the market, to the world. Um, not uh, and and but we, because we have a very innovative solution, we could actually with that innovative solution also address markets that normally cannot afford it. So it's actually indeed the in, in innovative technology that make the link between the traditional mo uh, business model and allowing it to address, let's say, uh, more more social difficult markets. Actually. Um, so so interesting. So I also want to uh, to ask Jordi and and uh, Aziz if they have any special comments on our insights on um, the special business model for uh, driving innovation, if there is one. Well, um, yeah. If you allow, if you allow me, Aziz, uh, just a short comment. The, the way I, I see innovation is, uh, for me, innovation is in this context doing new things or doing things in a new way, right? And uh, when we uh, speak about social innovation, uh, I think we should take into account three main pillars. Uh, one is that uh, we all need to have an agenda for social innovation. So we cannot do social inno innovation uh, opportunistically or just because uh, there is uh, uh, some, some um, 
let's say, short-term gain that we can achieve. Uh, so putting an agenda, an agenda is very important and communicating the agenda to your own ecosystem is uh, uh, a priority. And then uh, also uh, using the same word, priority, we need to set up priorities. So resources are not unlimited. So we need to build uh, some uh, priorities to put some resources around the agenda that we have set up. And the third pillar is cooperation. So if we really want to transform the way uh, things are being uh, uh, conducted, the way uh, we be behave, the way uh, we produce products, the type of products that we use, we need cooperation. So I do believe and embrace the concept of open innovation to really help different stakeholders to put this agenda in place and to share knowledge and transform what is currently being in the market that is uh, really not sustainable. So that's how I would uh, I would look into a business, a business model. So putting the agenda uh, at the same level at, as the strategic agenda for uh, revenue creation in this in this sense, because the the uh, um, the way you generate revenues today is going to be completely different uh, to the way that you generate revenues in the next. 10 to 15 years, even less. We've seen that with the pandemic, how people has been opening up for cooperation and to change uh, processes. Uh, this is an example of what we are doing here today. So we need to look into this agenda and uh, embrace it and put all the efforts and cooperation to achieve it, right? And to share benefits in a different way. Okay. That's my view. Uh, I think you have anything to add to this? Uh, you're on mute. One second. Yeah. Just to, to build on uh, what Janet uh, said, it's very important to, to have a, uh, a business plan. There is something called blended va value proposition that is used for so, uh, social innovation or social ent enterprises. And that's very important. So what does what the, the important part is they build the business plan as a normal one, but they have to show and identify the social impact of what they're doing. And also they have to show the financial, they have to show all of the, the, uh, the mechanisms required to, to have uh, the, the correct business or to make it a successful business. And how are they going to measure? Because it's going to go pass by m multiple stages for each stage. How are they going to measure the success and for, uh, uh, for or measure the impact of this uh, startup or this social enterprise? So these are very important points. It's a bit different than uh, going to the triple bottom line, but it's kind of similar, but uh, it puts as concrete the, what do you call it, the impact and the financial benefit uh, in that area. Usually they use, uh, when it comes to that, they use uh, two main canvases, which is the value proposition canvas and the business model canvas. So, so that you can explain to the investors because it's not any more donors, it's investors that you have, like the bank that Janet represented and so on. So they want their money back. How are you gonna mm. generate money and all of that? And how are you gonna help the society? Okay, uh, thank you Aziz. This is a very good point you're making. And it brings me actually to the next topic uh, I would like to discuss with you and have your insights, which is education. Uh, and uh, some time ago uh, in my life, I did an MBA. I don't remember having learned anything about social innovation or business model for innovation. Um, it may, may be that uh, my MBA was a long time ago. But um, anyway, we're, we're entering a new field here. Uh, we seem to, some of us seem to, let's say, invent the business model um, ourselves. Um, and so this points to the fact to uh, education. Um, I think when, when uh, uh, I talked with uh, Ricarda before, she told me it seems like when you do social innovation, you have to, let's say, argue with people why you're doing it. 
Yeah, you almost, uh, and which is which is a bit weird. Yeah, when you have a normal business, you don't have to argue why you do a normal business. When you do social innovation, you have to argue why you do social innovation. And and I think this points not only to a lack in the education at let's say a high level like MBA or whatever, but uh, also to a lack of in education at primary schools, secondary schools. Um, so I would like to have your insights. Um, well, how could we improve education at several levels, actually, to with regards to social innovation, so that uh, maybe in the next generation we don't have to, let's say, explain why we are doing social innovation. So um, maybe Ricarda, you can first uh, talk a bit about this. Yes, I I don't have an answer. <laughs> I was thinking when you were speaking that. Uh, Unfortunately, or fortunately, the next generation will have it clear that we need social innovation <laughs> because that's the only way for our species to survive on this planet. So the, probably the, the answer, the short answer is, what is the alternative to social innovation? Mm -hmm. We have seen that we reached, I think, the, the limit, the, the limit of our mm -hmm. planet for what we can do. So education is a huge subject in Italy, like I think in every country. And I think that the fact that we are not investing enough for education to keep the pace with the rest of the innovation that we have going on, it's a, it's a, it's a symptom of the fact that we're not investing enough in care. We're not investing enough in well-being. We're not investing enough in everybody having the same opportunities in the mm -hmm. planet. And uh, it's, uh, it's crazy that a football player earns in a day what a teacher earns in a year. It seems it means that the values are upside down. So I think that we can consider education as a very clear symptom, and we can look at education as a good way to look if you're going in the right direction. Because the moment we start investing enough in education, it means we we start really believing that the values are different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, Janet, you want to uh, come to that? I'm curious. Uh, Denmark is based in Scandinavia, and Scandinavian countries are known to be very, let's say, socially driven, and so on. So I'm curious yeah. to hear your uh, view on this yeah and I, I i want to share this because this is actually an area where we have done something which which seems to uh, to work well uh, and and what happened was that uh, a few years ago uh, the government at the time they decided on sort of a national plan for how they could improve uh, the conditions for entrepreneurship in the country as such and one piece of that was actually to look at education because the vision was that if we want to create a, a country where more people start their own businesses or go for social innovation in different ways, uh, we, we actually need to start teaching young mm -hmm. people, elderly people about this, um, you know, from, from the start of school to when they do their MBAs. Uh, and that's why they then decided on establishing the Foundation for Entrepreneurship, which I'm now serving in the board for. Um, so, so that foundation was established from the government side uh, and actually also a budget for it. Uh, for that one is on the national budget uh, every year at the moment. Uh, and what the foundation then does is that it, 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 it has a, uh, some people working there and they establish then uh, educational packages. Uh, they try to teach teachers uh, on mm -hmm. how to do this so that it's not so difficult for them. Um, they create events, communication stuff. Uh, there is a national uh, championship for young kids on entrepreneurship uh, and there is a special focus on, on sustainable solutions or social innovation. So I think that's just an example of, of yeah. how this can be done. Um, there would be many other ways, but, but I think this is a good example. Yeah, it's indeed a very good example. I never heard about that. It's really, I mean, we sh you should promote that further also towards other countries. Yes, very interesting. I think so. And uh, Natalie, any additional comments? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, Belgium can sometimes be retarded in many kind of ways, but when it's um, in the framework of social innovation, there is some movement in it. Um, so what, what we see more and more in universities and also in the high schools is that people, you know, social entrepreneurs are invited to talk about uh, their experience. Mm -hmm. Um, we are invited a lot of times, you know, to, to discuss 
the students. Um, uh, students come over to do their practice for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. to see how social innovation works. Uh, we have been confronted also with hackathons, you know, social hackathons. Uh, mm -hmm are developing like a whole project, you know, with hundreds uh, of students. Um, so there's a lot of things happening, but there's like no one case. It's not like yeah. okay, this is the case, but a lot of stuff have been happening. Yeah. And I think if we could also, how do you say it, um, try to expand it to, to secondary layers and primary layers of primary schools, what I think is possible, you know, a hackathon is just yeah. fun to do, you know, a challenge is fun to do. And if you can get those kids enthusiastic and so on, mm -hmm. I think we can start the movement. So I'm really convinced that there are nice things happening. Yeah. Maybe we should both put it together and create a model around it. Yeah, it sounds great. I mean, what I heard here, I mean, if these models, these things that are happening would be shared between countries, between organizations, I think we would move ahead really very far um, and any other comments from Aziz or Jordi on, on uh, this topic? Aziz? Mute, yeah. I, think, uh, I think the education or the awareness, spreading the awareness from early ages is very important. We all know that the young people, the youth, they're very creative. Mm -hmm. and once you build the foundation, of doing good and helping the society and championing the companies that are social entrepreneurs or social enterprises, then that sticks to their head. You know, uh, mm -hmm. once you say that, oh, when you praise certain companies like Amazon or so on, I'm not talking about the, the social responsibility, but I would rather praise in, uh, for these young children the, from within the community and internationally uh, social enterprises that have blended within their strategy to help the society. Okay. This way you have them thinking, you have them believing that impacting society is good and it will not affect my financial return. I can make both. Yeah. I can make an economical r return and I can help my society and I can expand this idea and hopefully make it an international successful idea. Yeah. Okay. So starting from that age, I think is very important. Yeah, great comments also. Good to hear that uh, in different countries there are initiatives ongoing. Um, we could talk a long time about that and, and put our minds together on how we could improve things, but uh, time is running out. So I would like, like to ask each of you to make like a bold statement, a bold vision you have on, let's say, social innovation, uh, starting with uh, Natalie. If you unmute yourself, it will... Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, final statement. Uh, I have strong beliefs that step by step, the movement, the social innovation movement is going in the right direction. And I think that we should more collaborate, you know, all the social mm -hmm. leaders and make the movement yeah. stronger to have a bigger penetration on all levels. And one of the ideas I had was, what would this be, you know, having in every country and, and, and the government having a minister of social innovation, no, honestly, I mean it, I think that would really yeah. create a change and that it can really drip it down that way. So yeah. naive again, maybe. But we'll, we'll that. Yeah, thank you. Jordi, <laughs> what's your bold vision? Yeah, well, thank you. Well, I, I believe in, in, in social innovation, not in the social impact itself, of course, but uh, in social innovation. And uh, as an African proverb says, um, if you want to go fast, uh, uh, go alone. If you want to go to, if you want to go far, go together. So yeah. uh, in social innovation, that makes even much more sense. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, uh, going together, we can go, go both yeah. far and and and, and fast yeah. together in, in this in this race. Yeah. Okay, Aziz, one one bold statement. I think uh, social innovation is a very important uh, principle that should be and restate again, re confirm it, uh, taught from early ages. And 
marketed and sponsored by the governments and the society. Mm -hmm. uh, this will solve a lot of problems locally and internationally and create also the, the goodwill collaboration between entrepreneurs. Yeah, okay. Ikaida? I miss the energy of being in the same room for, with you and the audience. I really miss it physically. And I hope that we have the chance to speak about this with a glass of wine. That's my message. <laughs> because I think we have said enough about innovation, but I really miss yeah. you. <laughs> Very good. Uh, you can all come to Zurich and we'll have a, a glass of wine here or beer or whatever. Uh, Janet, last uh, statement from your side. Well, I'll do it short. So I think social innovation, it, it's, it's about the future. And my vision is that we can create a society where we help more young companies succeed. Mm -hmm. And we do that by working together across all of the sectors. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you, your, your visions, your insights were, were excellent today. Um, if we will put our minds together and work together, we could get uh, very far. And, and thank you for this very inspirational contribution. Thank you, Eve, for having a good production. Bye. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.